So here's my makeshift uh, Raspberry Pi cam, my, my Octolapse. Um, you can see that, first of all, I have both hands. I, I bought a new, uh, what are, whatever they're called, an arm for my desk, so I can use both hands now. Uh, but you can see that the Raspberry Pi is over here, um, and it's plugged into the printer underneath the, the bed there. Um, and I'm, I'm looking to design, or hopefully maybe someone can sh point me to the direction of uh, a Pi cam mount for the CR6. I haven't seen any. Um, my plan is to put it on the Y axis uh, somehow off of the the um, off the rail, but we'll we'll have to wait and see. I'm still looking at the the high quality camera. I'm considering getting the high quality camera for the Raspberry Pi to see how that works out. But as you can see, the helping hands actually is uh, is helping. Um, and then. <clears throat> One of the other things I did for the Raspberry Pi, and go ahead and unplug this, is before I ever plugged anything in, I was aware of the issues they were having in which I totally disconnected the red wire. So you can see here, um, I just cut about, a, what was that, about an inch, inch and a half of the red wire off. And uh, you could cover it with, with tape if you want to, if you feel uncomfortable, but <clears throat> for the most part, if, as long as there's no voltage going through, I think it's fine. I'm pretty sure they fixed it in the, the later versions of the printer. Um, but I didn't want to take any chances, so I just completely disconnected it anyway. Um, I've been very, very fortunate not to have any electrical issues with this printer. Um, I feel really bad for those that did have the either the earlier units or the defective units. So um, I really hope Creality fixes that. And uh, hopefully they try to restore what little, um, you know, uh, community backing they had. Because they're not bad printers. They just need to pay attention to what they're doing. <clears throat> and so we had the Raspberry Pi hooked up. Um, I don't really have any other major modifications as far as, like, remote printing or, or anything like that. Because the Raspberry, the Raspberry Pi is quite enough, I think, for that. One of the things that I did was, you can see, I glued the filament runout sensor board in place because that was one of the issues is that it was very loose. I guess they're supposed to be retainer clips and they were not present. So I made sure to push it down all the way and then I glued just the two retaining clips or the retaining posts so that the filament runout sensor wouldn't move. In addition to gluing down the filament runout sensor board, um, I found this on Thingiverse. It's a, it's a filament guide that goes from the filament runout sensor to the extruder. Um, and two, two reasons why I like this. It's simple, but also um, it tapers the hole. So from the filament runout side, it's uh, a larger diameter and then as you get over to the other side where the extruder is it's a smaller diameter so what it does is it just clips on right here and it's not terribly tight um, it'll just clip right on if i can get it in there there we go um, it just sits right in there and as you push the filament through the filament runout sensor. It'll guide it directly into the extruder. Now the extruder is a whole different problem because the extruder will um, cause some issues when you're trying to get the filament into it. And what happens is you, you have to end up twisting the filament so that it uh, fits properly. I was getting a spare piece of filament. Um, so it goes in, you don't even have to use your fingers, um, you might have to twist a little bit, you can see that it goes in, and if you're lucky it goes straight through the extruder. Um, in this case it actually did, so you can see there's the end of it. Um, and then you can just pull it right back out. And it's a um, pretty quick print, I, I find it to be one of the better uh, additions to the printer. Um, you can see here that it won't go, and that's because of the the extruder. So what I, what I do is, I don't know if you can see it, I'm twisting it, and then the filament continues to go in. So I think the extruder 
Um, still needs a lot of work, but for the most part, I think it's pretty good. The next thing that I did that I want to talk about was I adjusted the gantry because it was off by about two millimeters. So if you take any type of um, measurement, one side of the gantry um, should be equal to the other side. And so what I did was I measured one side, and in this case, it's about six, 68 millimeters, something like that. But when I went over to the other side, it was, it was much higher. And so what I had to do is I had to adjust it. And the way you do that is you loosen the top of the lead screw. And I, I recommend doing the one that's opposite of the motor. So do this lead screw on the side. And what you're going to do is you're going to loosen these two grub screws, grab screws, lock screws, whatever you want to call them. And you're going to measure as you turn this lead screw without turning the other one. And you're going to adjust the, um, you're going to adjust the gantry so that it's level on both sides. Because you can't adjust the build plate, the next best thing is to adjust the gantry. Um, and remember, you want to loosen the top screws and not the bottom ones near the uh, motor because um, it'll still turn it'll still turn both lead screws because of the belt. Now if you really wanted to go hog wild, you could take off this belt and you know take off that whole entire assembly. But I found that it was just easiest to loosen these two screws, um, hold this so it doesn't turn, hold the hold the um, gear so it doesn't turn and then slightly adjust the lead screw so the gantry goes up and down on one side um, and then that makes it more level. And the reason why I knew that is because I used the bed level visualizer in Octopi, um, in Octoprint. <clears throat> so I could tell that one, one side was higher than the other. Um, and so what I did was I adjusted it. All right, so here was the other thing regarding the switch um, that I found very useful. So first of all, you wanna make sure obviously that you unplug it. Um, but also, I would leave the printer turned on and unplugged for a few minutes just to um, dissipate any capacitors or any, any other electrical um, tendencies in the machine. And obviously, the reason why you want to do it is because you're messing with the, the power switch. So if you look, let's see if I can get in here. If you look at the, the actual switch, you'll notice that all it has is a couple of little um, towers um, and what these towers do is they make the connection happen. So when you flip it in the on position, so up, it's going to make those little towers rock a certain direction. And it changes the way that those little metal contacts uh, work inside the switch. Uh, and then, when, of course, when you turn it off, it releases that tension. And so it makes the it makes the pieces of metal disconnect um, and what I had to do was I had to bend those a little bit so that there was more tension on them because they were very uh, they weren't very um, open so they were very flat to begin with so they were very close to making contact all the time so in order to get the switch out you just have to um, you'll see there's a nub on this side and then there's a nub on this side and you just have to pry it off Let's see if I can get a view in there. Um, and it sits in that little hole right there. Um, so you just need to pry it off. And once you do that, you want to be careful that these don't pop out automatically. Um, I have a pair of tweezers here. And then what I did was I just took out the metal. And I want to show you specifically the orientation. So when you take it out, you want to make note of the little bump there. Uh, and that's part of uh, the way that it reacts to the, the switch. And so that little bump along with this little piece of metal soldered at the bottom is going to help make that connection. And so when I first got this piece of metal, or when I first got the printer and I looked inside, this piece of metal was uh, pretty much 
like that, like it was very close. So I very gently pulled it apart to add a little bit more space and tension. And then you can see that um, it's a little bit, you know, less likely to make accidental contact. And I did that for both of them because there's two. So when you put it back in, you want to make sure you put it back in the same orientation on one side. Of course, this is not, you know, the way that you should have to do it. Okay, and then it just kind of sits in there. And then the same thing on the other side. They're actually the same orientation. See the, the little bump followed by the piece of metal there at the bottom. And again, all I did was I pulled it apart slightly. Again, like I said, when I first got it, it was very close together like that. So what I did was I gently bent it because you don't want to break it. Gently bent it back a little bit so that there was a little bit more space and tension. Okay, and then you put it back in. One of the interesting things that I noticed was that there's a, actually a light bulb in there. But when I turn the printer on, there's no light on the switch. And I don't know if that's on purpose or not, but I'm not going to mess with it. I don't care about the light. Okay, so you put it back in. Make sure it's in the same place as the other one. And the bulb looks like it might be bent or broken or just not enabled, not soldered in the right spot. I'm sure it's a disconnect somewhere. Um, and then what you do is you put the switch back on. Mine was on at the top, off at the bottom. And all you do is you kind of push it back into place and you can see there's a very audible click back and forth. So instead of being spongy, it's it's much more pronounced. Um, and if you feel comfortable, you can do it yourself or, you know, you can get a replacement from Creality. Um, but I find that this hasn't caused me any issues. It's very, uh, very defined on and off. Um, I don't know if it'll deteriorate over time. Um, I'm pretty sure that the metal spring steel will, will probably stay the way it is and it won't cause too many issues. Uh, but you can see that it's very audible and it's not spongy at all, which is nice. Um, and just to show you, I don't think it lights up. Let's go ahead and plug it in. Pray to the power gods. Here goes my mount. My, <laughs> I was holding it up with the spool holder. Um, so you can see that. It's a very um, audible click. And of course you can hear all the loud fans in this darn thing. Um, and you can see that it's done. Uh, I kind of would have liked it to light up, but that's not a big deal. And then you, you can try to move the switch and it, it won't it won't easily try to turn off. So it's a lot, it's a lot better. And then if you turn it off, it's it's a much more audible. And you and you can't I'm I'm pushing it pretty pretty hard and it's not going to accidentally turn on if you push something against it lightly I mean if you push something against it it probably will turn on depending on how hard you push it but um, I found that to be the best best change that I made to the printer is the power switch the next thing is the flashing of the firmware um, and the, the initial flashing of the motherboard over here um, on the left using the, the SD card is pretty easy. You put just the, the flash bin file uh, by itself on the SD card, you put it in, you turn it on and it flashes. Um, but one of the things that they don't necessarily go over um, is the flashing of the, the LCD firmware. Um, for, for those of you that don't know, the, the um, LCD screen has its own SD card. Now, the only problem is it's a micro SD card. It's not, it's not the full size. So when you take this off, first you want to take off the mount um, and then gently flip it over. And then what you're going to want to do is unplug it. Okay. Um, and then you have four slightly smaller screws on the screen itself. So let me go ahead and take those off. I think it's this one. Yep. 
So we take these four screws off. Come on, you stinker. There we go. So then we take these four screws off that hold the cover onto the screen. I should say the screen circuit board. Once you take these four screws out, you can take the back cover off. Careful not to lose the screws. Not that, not that you, you all don't have your own replacement screws in a box somewhere. So once you take this off, you'll see um, the back of the, the screen. Um, here's the the actual screen driver, I think. Um, and down here is the micro SD card. Um, and what you want to do is you want to follow the same procedure. I'll put it in the, the description. And then uh, you insert the SD card. You can put the cover back on without screwing it in. And then what you're going to have to do is plug it in, of course, um, and then just lay it on, lay it on the, uh, the rail, and then power on the machine. And when you power it on, um, it'll go through the, the update process. Um, I should have done it on on video, but I did not because I'm impatient. Um, but I will put a link to the video I followed in order to do that. Um, and then <clears throat> once it's once it's flashed, turn off the printer, flip it back over, unplug it, take make sure you take the micro SD card out, um, and then put everything back the way it was, and it should be fine.